I think you're on. Haha, <laughs> we're on. <laughs> so uh, we, we had a little bit of problems with the old laptop and uh, it crashed and um, hopefully burned somewhere. Piece of crap. And uh, so yeah, we've got this new laptop, but we didn't have any of the login info to get onto uh, onto uh, B Real TV. So uh, now we're set. <laughs> Here we are. We still have a problem because this is just a prop. It's not working. We're using the audio on this crappy little camera. Um, I've got my special guest, half pound of uh, cheesequake. Just chilling out here. It's, he's going to be uh, hanging out for most of the show. Smoking some candy kush uh, from DNA, uh, DNA Seeds. It's pretty fucking nice. It's got some of those kush qualities, but there's, uh, there's something a little deeper going on here. Can't hear a thing. Can't hear can't hear a thing. Well, not no, because only can they hear us out there? They should be able to hear us. Yeah. Can you hear us out there? Send me a text <laughs> message if uh, if you can't. I'm gonna go uh, send it out right now. All right. Text message sent out. Awaiting a, a reply to see if I can be heard. The first, the first video was the Hermetic Order. Hermetic Order is the first video, yeah. Okay, cool. Can it be heard upstairs? Yeah. Oh yeah, even through that little crappy thing. Yeah. Wicked! It ain't so crappy. Okay, so um, we're behind schedule. I got some fucking videos lined up. We're going to be talking about hermeticism. Not, um... Nah, never mind. I was going to make a, a stupid joke. But yeah, we're, we're talking about hermeticism and its, uh, its place in, um, in everyday life, basically. So here we go. This is the uh, first video to get you kind of kind of used to uh, the idea and uh, some some hermetic symbols. Ooh, Green Supreme says, nope, we nope. cannot be heard. We cannot be heard, what? But Marijuana Man says, yes, we can be heard. Oh wait, I just got another message, hang on, hang All on. Right. <clears throat> let's see, let's see, can we be heard? I just want to be heard. Yeah, according to this, uh, we are broadcasting sound. All right, well, we're broadcasting sound. Maybe Green Supreme's volume is turned down. Or maybe we can't be heard. <laughs> we got perfect streaming as well, so. Perfect streaming? That's like uh, getting an A++ on a test. I'm going to run upstairs and check. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, wait, now Green Spring says, yep, we can be heard. Oh, sweet. All right. Woo-hoo! Yes. There we go. All right. All right. I think I just damaged my speakers at home. Could be. It went into, it went into the overload. Oh, well. <laughs> Play Hermetic Order? Yes. This, is, uh, this video is, um, yeah, it's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Here we go. In the life.
life of detachment, my meditation I foster Do my rituals in a habitual lotus posture Monastic yogi, divine mother Shahobi In the envelope of light, enlightening the light Unite the harmonies of the universal Godhead With every principal aspect, the vibration of own sense Promise, compassionate rays, lift my ceremonial temple with devotional flames Material gains, vanish when you abandon delusions of ego See through the machinery, the dream will be to decode Adorn your spinal shrines with the infinite sublime An instrument refined through an omnipresent mind Transfixed on Shiva's pride and with absolute bliss Krishna the cosmic beloved that dances around the midst The cosmic beloved that dances around the midst Look inside yourself, within and without Be an outcast, cast yourself out Cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead. Own oh, look inside yourself, within and without. Be an outcast, cast yourself out. Cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead. Own. Oh. You best believe when I leave from this den of thieves He who achieves rolls up his sleeves and receives all that he needs He who plants the seeds and sorts through the weeds Surely succeeds as he reads the mysteries for their keys It has occurred to me that he who prefers to be Wrapped in a fleur de lis remains trapped in a degree of 33 As the mercury flows to the underground stream known as alchemy How can we cannot see that we are all truly free to agree to disagree? Frequently, people speak to me as they seek to be Part of the secrecy, the heart of the symphony But it's hard to feel sympathy when you're pissed to be Part of a society that lies to me and tries to see our minds combine to intertwine to find the underlying sign or key Press me wine to get behind the pure fantasy Unwind the tie that binds tragedy and travesty To the divine bloodline before flood time up to his majesty Look inside yourself, within and without Be an outcast, cast yourself out Cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead Oh, look inside yourself, within and without Be an outcast, cast yourself out Cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead own. I see the embodiment of the goddess in your form. In a million wombs, you've been born and have been born. Forth into the fire, giving back to Mother Gaia. Transmigration, chasing after with desire. Retire, cause imaginary seeds can never bear. Cotton drunk on the senses, we've forgotten and been watching. Part and parcel buried under so much illusion. What we can do is be pandas in the school of dissolution. Look inside yourself, within and without. Be an outcast, cast yourself out, cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead. Own oh, look inside yourself, within and without. Be an outcast, cast yourself out, cast your lot above and below the supreme personality of Godhead. Own. Oh. So there you have it. That's um, it's a very fucking intelligently written song. Um, the imagery that goes along with uh, with the tune is it's phenomenal. So if you if uh, you've seen any of these symbols or images and you know in everyday life, look into them, see what they mean. There's a whole other world behind this world. <laughs> I'm talking into this mic, but it isn't even working. A really good documentary on that is called Secrets in Plain Sight. It's all about hermetic symbolism in architecture. And it, uh, it mentions the building in Winnipeg that you... Well, let's, let's, actually, let's actually talk about this building in Winnipeg. Um, okay, there's a, the Manitoba Legislative Building. It's said to be a replica of King Solomon's temple. Um, it's a lot of controversy surrounding this uh, <coughs> this kind of ideology and uh, approach to interpreting its its architecture. Um, so there there are some people that are like there's a guy named Frank uh, Frank Albo Frank Alba Frank Albo I think his name is and. He holds uh, he holds hermetic tours of the, uh, the Manitoba legislative. Now, since I was a kid, I've always known this building is different than any other building I've seen. Um, it's cloaked in uh, in Greek and um, Roman uh, esoteric symbols. It's got Mithraic symbols in it. Um, 
it's fu it's pretty fucking amazing. Now the the grand hall is 66.6 .6 by 66.6. .6. Um, it's got a room that's uh, 20 cubits by 20 cubits, and that's the holiest of holies. Um, it's just it's very amazing. So uh, you know what? Let's let's show a little bit about this. Uh, there's there's been some documentaries about this. Um, one on CBC television. I think that's where this comes from. It's uh, called Freemasonry and Architecture: The Hermetic Code. Okay, number three then. Yeah. Uh, so I just play it. Yeah. Okay. What is the most important kind of building? Maybe in the ancient world, it would have been the temple. Today, it's the building where laws are enacted. It's the, it's the modern day equivalent of the temple. I think that most people think of the Manitoba Legislative Building as the same kind of uh, generic building that uh, you would find in any other uh, province. But architecturally, there's all these elements and developments of the building that uh, cannot be explained away as just motif. I've been studying the Manitoba Legislative Building for six years, uh, obsessively, because I believe it is a reconstruction of King Solomon's Temple in the heart of the prairies. An encyclopedia of sacred architecture inscribed in stone. Winnipeg scholar and art historian Frank Alpo discovered that the building's architect, Frank Worthington Simon, was a student of alchemy, Freemasonry, and Hermeticism the wisdom traditions of the West. From these disciplines, Simon determined that certain symbols and geometric proportions could impact human beings in profound ways. Frank Simon's ultimate intention with the Manitoba Legislative Building is, to borrow his own words, that the, the building would, in the course of time, make people more intelligent, better balanced, and altogether more civilized human beings. When Frank leads tours of the building, he has people imagine they are entering a temple which he believes was the architect's intention. What we're doing next year is we're going to follow the procession that an ancient priest would have followed going into a temple. And there's various, as I mentioned before, there's a language of temple architecture. And the language is hidden in plain view. My relationship with Manitoba Legislative Building began as a sheer accident. Um, I was driving by a very familiar and popular street in Winnipeg, Memorial Boulevard, and out of the corner of my eye, uh, I noticed that the building was flanked by these two giant Egyptian sphinxes. I had no idea I was going to descend so far down a rabbit hole of discovery and um, obsession. <laughs> Once I've, you know, I, I went into the building and I was greeted by these two giant bronze bison, I thought, wow, that's interesting because that's precisely what you'd expect to find in uh, a classical, pagan, or ancient Near Eastern temple. I notice a number of other features which scholars tend to refer to as apotropaic, that which wards off evil. Things like Medusa, lion's head, and even that beautiful bust of Athena. These are all part of temple vocabulary. And a lot of people have lost this uh, understanding. This threshold right here represents a kind of metaphysical threshold. It separates the profane world to this new world that we're about to enter. This new world is a sacred world. And you need, in order to enter into this symbolic world, these icons of protection to ward off evil. And so every person Through years of academic study, Frank discovered that temples in the ancient Near East often had three specific chambers, an area of protection, an altar or sanctuary, and a holy of holies that was off limits to everyone but the high priest. I'm just thinking in the back of my mind, well, gosh, you know, I have all of these other features that are part of temple vocabulary. You know, if I, would, if I were to find an altar next, then maybe I have a thesis. When you enter into the rotunda, you're now in the era of Renaissance church architecture. In that same room that we're expecting an altar, uh, I found, you know, 12 small lights on one of the lamps around a much larger bright light. And to me, this was a kind of reference, an allegory to the 12 disciples around the bright light of Christ. In the altar area is a painting 
known as the War Memorial. But Frank noticed clues suggesting that the mural depicted the Passion of Christ. Directly above the figure of Jesus, right there, hidden in plain view, is the Madonna and Child. It's a representation of the Passion of Christ, exactly where you'd expect to find the presence of the Lord if this was a Christian house of worship. You might have looked down and noticed this eight-pointed star. As we circle around the star, it, it appears that the star is always closest to us, right? It's a kind of optical illusion. Frank claims that the eight-pointed star is an ancient symbol of fertility, which represents the province of Manitoba. Directly above this symbol on the dome of the building is the famous Golden Boy statue who watches over the city. Frank reasons that this is the Greek god Hermes, the deity of travel, father of alchemy, and a symbol of the city of Winnipeg. Hermes, a patron of merchantry, travel, and who sat at the crossroads. Well, isn't that exactly what Winnipeg represented? It was the center of travel, merchantry, and uh, uh, the kind of crossroads of the nation. And for us, in order to kind of complete this journey, there is one last room that we're allowed to go, well, in fact, we're not allowed to go into. And it's that room right there. It's the one room that's forbidden for any public access. Nobody is allowed in this room. All temples have a Holy of Holies. And this one, the legislative temple, also has a Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is the most sacred chamber of Solomon's temple. It was where the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God's presence on earth, was stored. Solomon's temple is the central symbol for the fraternal organization known as Freemasonry. Freemasons were intimately involved in the construction of the legislature, and every premier in Manitoba was a Mason from 1872 to 1968. These elements from architecture can have an effect on the soul, can have an effect on, on becoming a more moral person. And isn't that the cornerstone of uh, Freemasonry? Frank found that the proportions of the room match those of the Holy of Holies described in the Bible, 20 cubits by 20 cubits. A lot of people entered into this debate as what was the unit of measurement used to build King Solomon's temple. And even the Freemasons entered into this debate and they determined that a cubit was 14.4 inches. And if you take that unit of measurement and you apply it to this room, it turns out to be exactly 20 cubits by 20 cubits. That's pretty good, huh? But what was missing from the room was the Ark of the Covenant, the container for the Ten Commandments. After months of following clues, Frank discovered it on the roof. It was disguised as the war chest. It was exhilarating. I mean, I felt like Indiana Jones. Yeah, I don't know how, how else to put this. I mean, the whole saga of Indiana Jones is this kind of crusade for the most important biblical artifact known to man that had been lost and buried and no one knows where it is. And there it was in my own hometown looking up at the uh, eastern kind of pediment of the building, the Ark of the Covenant. This kind of sacred geometry lent itself to the glory of God. So you would walk into a building and somehow in the depths of your soul, you would feel, ooh, there's something, I, I, you know, I feel the, the presence of the Lord here. So uh, there we have it. That's uh, <clears throat> that's um, a video. I think it was on CBC News. Uh, there's also a book called The uh, Hermetic Code, um, basically all on the construction of Winnipeg and how it's uh, hermetically designed. Now, <clears throat> I made some videos of uh, the legislative as well. I was just uh, I was just in Winnipeg visiting. Um, so yeah, when I was there, I figured I would make some videos. Now, the whole top there with the, the statue of Hermes, um, 
we have a a line that's pointing basically if you if you follow the heel of Hermes you know uh, or the tendon line of his Achilles his Achilles it goes across the river uh, to this apartment block now this apartment block um, shared the same architecture um, or architect and uh, it's on a street called Roslyn <laughs> which is kind of odd because Roslyn is synonymous in uh, in hiding the bloodline of the bloodline of Christ and all sorts of things so um, so yeah there's there's all sorts of things with Winnipeg and if you go further past Roslyn uh, we come to a an intersection that the city refers to as Confusion Corner, but it's a five-pointed intersection, which is pretty crazy. Um, to have a, a pentagram for an intersection is it's kind of unique in city planning. And at the corner of this five-pointed um, intersection is the uh, the head uh, Masonic temple in Winnipeg, the Masonic Lodge. Which is, you know, all clever coincidence, or is it hermetic encryption? Who knows, who knows, except for them. We can sit here and speculate, but all we're doing is uh, kind of speculating. I think I'm correct in it, but who knows. Now, um, when, when, I was, uh, when I was in Winnipeg, when when I was in Winnipeg, <laughs> Green Supreme says he can hear my crotch. <laughs> well, it's only the camera mic that's working. These mics are off. Yeah, we, yeah. But the uh, yeah, the I was given a really beautiful uh, Cheech glass piece um, last week. Now I went back home and uh, brought it with me. Was using it for the first day. And later on that day, I put it uh, put it away in uh, my my kind of suitcase thing. It's just a leather bag that unzips like this that completely folds out. There's not really a pouch in there; it just folds out flat, almost like the inside of a suitcase. So I had the bong in there, and um, let's play this video. That's uh, the one on the camera. The one on the camera. Okay. Yeah, the first one. In a couple of secs, frame it. And uh, this video is innocent. We don't need to frame it. Oh, please, no. Uh oh. <laughs> we can't play them, can we? Oh, we can play them. Just See this new laptop? It's. Uh, I forgot about the media player. Everything's a chore. Installing a media player, are we? No, no, no. We just have to use this one. <laughs> All right. Come on. As I watch in suspense. Yeah. All right. There. It looks like it's up. It's up. If I can just frame it properly. Wow, that's a pretty, uh, pretty cool task you got going on there. I never get to see what Marius actually does behind this computer, and now I'm watching and it's, uh, he does stuff. There's stuff to do. He's framing shit. Pause it. Pause Get that it. and reverse it. Oh, right. Look at that. Okay. So this is, uh, this is what happened, um, with the Cheech Bomb. All right. Give her, give her. Hey, what the fuck's going on? This is The Alchemist, and um, I'm not at home right now. I'm somewhere else. I'm out traveling. But I just had a mishap. I got a beautiful, beautiful bong from uh, Cheech Glass. And uh, I had it on my bed in this thing. Just like this. And I picked it up just like this, and it did exactly that. But I just want to show you how durable these things are. Because, you know, that went from a good four feet onto a fucking concrete floor.
the whole bong is still intact. Percolator is still intact. Bistable joint, still intact. Now I've tipped my ruler over just, just like this. Boom! Bistable, bistable joint smashes like crazy. But what did smash was my base. So I have to say, Cheech glass is fucking durable as hell. I did smash the base of it, but really, that's fucking impressive. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, we're, we're getting filmed <laughs> just all like, yeah, yeah, well, the that's cool, <laughs> well, and the video's over. Um, so yeah. That thing had a bowl in it with a, um, a 14 to 18 reducer. So by rights, the, that joint should have like smashed to, to pieces. Very impressed. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding this. There's some people that aren't happy. Um, but I don't know. I, I really have to say it's a fucking super high-end glass for, uh, for Chinese price. Everybody's, oh, it's just Chinese shit, that's Chinese shit. Well, just because a guy chooses to buy a factory in a certain place and um, furnish it with the machines that he wants doesn't mean it's can, Chinese can glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hit out of the sub. We'll take the yeah, sublimator. Right? The there we go. Seven mil, eh? Yeah, you could drop this shit all day long. <laughs> all right, well, I'm not a big fan of vaping with water, but uh, here it goes. <laughs> Very good temperature. <laughs> That's a really nice tap. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why, but I actually find it harsher with water. Harsher, eh? Yeah. Oh. It's just me. It's the way I've conditioned myself. It's like, um, yeah, it's like there's steam with it or something. I was told that the, uh, <clears throat> without water, it might become gummed up. I think you want that gum. But I mean, in, in, in the percolators. Yeah, yeah, now you can't scrape all that beautiful, beautiful, all of this. <laughs> you know? <coughs> That's all I'm saying. And this is the gift. <laughs> <coughs> all right. That hit like a fucking champ. So, as you can see, um, if I had a hoss, let's say, that was a hoss bong that fell out of my suitcase, I'd be calling room service for a vacuum. <laughs> if uh, that was a boom Falazi, I'd be calling room service for a vacuum. Uh, unreal. Unfucking real. <coughs> I'm still never going to give up my rulers. <laughs> I love rulers. I love them, I love them, I love them. <coughs> but I've got a new, a new cousin. <laughs> All right, now let's get to uh, the seven hermetic principles. This is a nice chilled video. Uh, it made me feel really good. It uh, it says uh, 854 hertz, so I imagine it vibrates to that frequency. And it really, it made me feel nice. All right.
<coughs> there we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. So um, that's the uh, the seven seven hermetic uh, principles. I think um, they should be taught in school. <laughs> really, I, I honestly think that. I think um, if people started learning that at a young age, we'd have a we'd have a different uh, a different evolution going on. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think it um, it's time we we really uh, no that's not the one we were going for the the oh, second sorry. video that we had is that the one the hidden history of hermetics that's the one so um, we're gonna give you a little bit more on the history of hermeticism um, you know I have to hand it to YouTube man it's such a fucking it's such a great tool there's so many things out there. Um, that a person can find if you're if you're just willing to uh, to dig a little bit, and if you know if you know what you're looking for, you know it's it's pretty amazing. So um, yeah, this is uh, this is a little bit on the history of hermeticism, and if you want to know more, like there's lots. There's like two hour two hour uh, documentaries and stuff that I found all over the place, and um, <clears throat> a lot of really really valuable information. And I'm glad to see people. Um, you know, relaying that information, and I think um, the more public forums it gets into, the better. So here we go. Hermeticism, based on the teachings attributed to the ancient figure of Hermes Trismegistus, is one of the most influential, though hidden and mysterious, Western esoteric paths. Hermeticism originated in Egypt in the first century AD. At that time, Egypt was part of a vast Mediterranean free trade zone created by the Roman Empire, mixing peoples, cultures, and religions. This era, much like our own, saw the decline of traditional civic religion and a search for a more personal spiritual experience. This, this trend gave rise to the mystery religions of Eleusis, Isis, and Christianity. In Egypt, the blending of Greek and native Egyptian religion gave rise to the figure of Hermes Trismegistus, Greek for thrice great Hermes. Hermes Trismegistus embodied the attributes of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. Hermes, known to the Romans as Mercury, was the god of shepherds and land travel, merchants, literature, athletics, and thieves. Hermes was cunning and shrewd, the messenger of the gods, and associated with medicine and with dreams and magic. Thoth was an Egyptian moon god, and thus by analogy to the moon's phases, the god of time and seasons. Thoth was also the inventor of writing, the god of scribes, and like the Greek god Hermes, Thoth was associated with magic, medicine, and esoteric knowledge. Hermes Trismegistus therefore became the premier god of esoteric wisdom, the lawgiver, establisher of the temple cults and ritual, and the god of the arts and sciences. Moreover, he had a dual role, not only as a god, but as a human sage. This sage purportedly had lived in great antiquity and had received revelations and discovered hidden knowledge and a path to enlightenment. The means for preservation of this knowledge was the Hermetica, the text attributed to the authorship of Hermes Trismegistus. The Hermetic texts available today appear to date from the first to third centuries AD and are likely somewhat older in origin. In antiquity and to the Renaissance, it was believed that Hermes Trismegistus was older than Moses. When it was discovered in the 17th century that the text dated to around the birth of Christ, this is felt by many to be not only a debunking of their ancient origin, but also of their content. But the Hermeticists of antiquity and of the Renaissance, while they did value the age of the Hermetica, valued more its essential wisdom. The technical Hermetica, consisting of hundreds of texts of astrology, alchemy, and magic attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, and the more philosophical Corpus Hermeticum, circulated throughout the Roman Empire, where they had a wide influence on the practice of the Hermetic arts, upon philosophy, particularly Neoplatonism, and upon the theurgy, that is, the divine magic epitomized by the late classical sage Iamblichus. As the Western Roman Empire fell in the 5th and 6th centuries AD, much of its learning was preserved by the East Roman Empire of Byzantium. From Byzantium, this knowledge spread to the new Islamic civilization in the 7th century AD. A key factor in the spread of knowledge of classical Greek and Roman civilization were the Sabians of Haran, a city in modern-day southern Turkey. 
The Sabians were hermetic and are sometimes referred to as star worshippers, but more accurately, they viewed the planets and stars as a link to the divine. The Sabians were renowned as scientists, astronomers, astrologers, magicians, and makers of precision instruments. The most famous Sabian was the 9th century sage Thabit ibn Kura, who assisted in translating many Greek texts at the fabled House of Wisdom of the Abbasid Caliphs in Baghdad, as well as writing original works. He was the author of Demaginibus, an important text on astrological talismans, which has recently been translated from Latin into English. Sabian influence is also discernible in Picatrix, the most famous of texts of astrological magic. Thus, the Hermetic arts and philosophy passed into the Islamic civilization of the Middle East and exerted a profound influence upon it. In the 12th century, Europe had recovered sufficiently from the Dark Ages to begin receiving the classical arts and sciences from the advanced Islamic civilization. This transfer of knowledge included works of magic, astrology, and alchemy, which began to be translated from Arabic to Latin, mostly in Sicily and Spain. The study and practice of the Hermetic arts also began its revival in Europe as the Hermetic texts became available. A key event in the mid-15th century was the translation by Marsilio Ficino of the philosophical Corpus, Corpus Hermeticum at the request of Cosimo de' Medici of Florence. Thus, a renewed interest in the Hermetic arts was supplied with a firm philosophical basis. Magic astrology in the West once be again became more than simply a means to attain earthly power and advancement. They also became again a path for ascent to the divine. The rebirth of Hermetic thought and the Hermetic arts was the hidden esoteric inspiration of Renaissance culture. Botticelli, for example, is said to have consulted Ficino before painting his famous, famous Primavera, the Allegory of Spring. But during the so-called Enlightenment of the 18th century, materialism became the predominant philosophy and Hermeticism, because of its reliance on spiritual causality, fell almost completely into disuse. The 19th century witnessed a resurgence in Western esotericism, and with it, a renewed interest in Hermeticism. For example, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a key modern magical order, was founded in 1888. However, by this point, much Hermetic knowledge had been lost. Only very recently, in the past 20 years, have sufficient sources become available and scholarship completed in order to raise our knowledge back to that of Renaissance predecessors. Now, at the dawn of the 21st century, we are currently experiencing a new Hermetic Renaissance and a rebirth of the Hermetic arts of astrology, alchemy. together um a lot of fucking information in like eight and a half minutes um yeah i have to say hats off to uh to the makers of that um <clears throat> now within hermeticism we have uh now let's go to the uh the next one after that yeah well, that right now. W within hermeticism we have um a lot of different uh misinterpretations. Um, this one I think is one of them and that's the Baphomet. Um, so often when people see my Baphomet tattoo they're like holy crap Satan hey wow that's crazy and I sometimes I correct them sometimes I just let them run with it just because if that's where they're at that's where they're at. She corrected every single yeah, person. Yeah well but <laughs> the, then I would be a teacher and I'm, I, I, I'm not I'm not out to uh, that that's not my plight on this, uh, uh, you know, in this life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I like to inform people and stuff, but um, yeah, I don't think I don't think everybody deserves to learn, really. Um, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. But but the way the the way I wanna I wanna say it is, this is one of the most inter, uh, misinterpreted um, symbols of of our time, and uh, people. People gear it with Satan and with Lucifer and with uh, this crazy Illuminati, which is also misinterpreted that people are referring to uh, Skull and Bones Society, this New World Order. And really, that's not what the Illuminati was their original, you know, that's not what they're about. The Illuminati are, they're keepers of light, they're keepers of knowledge, they're, um, they're the holders, the ones who have been entrusted with sacred truths. And um, <clears throat> it's, uh, in a lot of cases, it's a birthright. And for sure, a lot of them, you know, a lot of these families, because they are so old, 
they are some of the controlling families in the banking system and in the gem industry and stuff like that. But you can't get around it. Somebody's got to control those industries, right? And if it's left up to old world um, philosophy and old world ideology, I think it instills a little bit of moral into the structure. And that's where we see this this shift going on, and that's with this new world philosophy and this new world structure and the, the implementation of skull and bones. Now, <clears throat> in my opinion, the Baphomet is, uh, it's all about duality, light and dark. It makes no difference. It's relative to the perceiver. Um, some people that do heinous acts don't really think they're doing a heinous act. They think they're doing something good. And somebody that perceives it as wrong, you know, puts it on and says, that's wrong. Well, by whose standards, it's just relative to the perceiver, just like anything is really. Um, so this whole this whole misinterpretation, uh, even this video at the end of it, I don't know if it's just to cover his ass, but at the end of it kind of fucking, you know, puts the whole Satan thing, which isn't even, it's it's not true. It's when the Knights Templars were, were uh, uncovering secrets in, uh, in um, the Temple of Solomon, um, they found obviously very valuable information and a lot of them decided, hey, you know what, I'm not part of this, this false religion that hired me to come here and do this stuff. You know, a lot of them recognized after reading these scrolls, I don't know if they dispelled the bloodline of Christ and how perhaps he could have been Isu, the illegitimate son of Caesar and Isis, um, or, uh, all, all sorts, all sorts of different, uh, different things. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, when they returned, uh, they were basically hunted down, tortured, um, and a lot of them took on the symbol of the Baphomet as their one true holy god, and the, the, you know, gave themselves up to become devout followers. And uh, this is uh, this is a video I found. This guy puts together some pretty, some really good information. You know, I, I have to say, but at the end, kind of kills it with the whole Satan thing and how we have to love the dark and blah blah blah. But whatever, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna go there. We're gonna we're gonna go here. So here we go. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Baphomet is made of a reverse composition of three abbreviations. Tem, Of, Av. Spelled backwards, Ba, Fomet. Tem referring to Templi, the O, Ominem. The P, Passis. The H, Hominem. The Av, Abbas. Tem of Av, Templi Ominum, Hominum Passis Abbas. Translating to, from Latin, the God of the Temple of Peace among all men. From the Greek, we have Bafe Metis, Bafe relating to dip or to die, to die with color. Or baptis, baptism, baptize. Metis, referring to the wisdom of the math, or the metrics, or the measurements. Baphometis, baptize by wisdom. Baptized in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the math. If you apply the Atbash cipher to the name Baphomet, written in Hebrew, the Atbash cipher uses the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and changes it with the last. The first shall be last. When you use this cipher on Baphomet, 
you get the word Sophia. Bet, pe, vav, mem, tav. Turns to shin, vav, pe, yud, aleph. Sophia, the divine mother wisdom, who Solomon speaks of throughout the Proverbs. Sophia is the origin wisdom of the word Sufi. The Sufis use the word Abu Fahimat, the source of all understanding. Abu Fahimat. You've heard of the goat of Mendes. This is a, another name for Abu Fahimat or Baphomet. The word Mendes is from the Mendesius. Mendesius in Greek is Lower Egypt. In Egypt, Lower Egypt is actually the north, referring to the higher self or the head. You could even see this in the traveler. Masons are also travelers, but there's a traveler named Rashef or Rashpu in the Egyptian system. Rashpu does not cut his hair, he doesn't cut his locks, and he has a goat coming from his head. Also in Egypt you have Ba, meaning the soul or immortal essence, Fa, to carry, lift, or born, and Maat, the order, truth, justice, the immortal essence being lifted and born to order and truth. The devil is the 15th tarot, or Baphomet is the 15th tarot. This relates to the 15th Hebrew letter. Ayin, which means eye in Ethiopia. It also means the eye that you see with in Hebrew. Ayin. 15 is, of course, 3 times 5, which leads us to the 5 point star. The 5 point star is always associated with Baphomet. His face is often seen inside the 5 point star. You have Pan, Pan and Pentacle. That Pentagram, that pen stands for five. Pan also stands for all, like Pangea, all one earth or one land, or Pan-African, one, all. The pan is also a goat man in the Greek mythologies. Getting back to the five, the five point star is made up of angles. These angles have degrees. The degrees of the five point star and pentagram are all nine. You have 36 degrees, 72 degrees, and 108 degrees. We know that 36 relates to 360 degrees. In the cipher, we know that the 72 relates to the 72 names of God used by Moses in the Hebraic Kabbalah tradition. And we know that the 108 relates to the Vedic tradition. You see this 108 on, on the beads that sadhus chant on, the Japa Mala, and the five letter mantra, five again, five, 
Namah Shivaya, which brings us to Shiva, the dreadlock Congo, who smokes ganja from the chillum and does yoga all day and all night. Because of his practices and his lifestyle, the father of his wife-to-be wasn't feeling him. His name was Daksha, and Daksha dissed Shiva bad, and Shiva sliced his head off. And out of mercy, Shiva bestowed the head of a goat on Daksha. Daksha is now one of the greatest devotees of Shiva. And sadhus to this day, before they partake of their chillum, will chant, BOOM! BOOM! Similar to the goat sound in India. You see, if you hate the devil, you become hate. Hate and hurting others, that's what I don't deal with. But to love, to love your enemies. Didn't Jesus Christ say to love your enemies? Don't they say that the devil or Baphomet is the greatest enemy? Can you love Baphomet? Or are you going to hate and become hateful and become just like what you're hating? Unto the pure, all things are pure. Your own Bible says this. And it's not what comes in. It's not these images of Baphomet that make you unclean or defile you. It's what comes out. Your interpretation of it. Most people want to interpret things superstitiously, spooky, mysteriously. This is all based on etymology and it's based on alchemy, finding the beauty in everything. He's back. Something froze there. I don't know when it froze. Right, uh, after, right after the video. Right after the video. Right after, All right. right. I have the screen there too. I didn't see it. Yeah. So I don't know what uh, what you guys heard me talk about, but I was saying that uh, not really fan, a fan of how the guy goes into the whole um, Christian Christianity side of it because it's that's really where it became bastardized and uh, he didn't he kind of failed to convey that that information but um, the one thing I, I do say is that uh, the the path of the Baphomet is basically revers, uh, re re reserved to uh, to the honest uh, the honest path the uh, not the self-righteous path but the the righteous path in life and that is to uphold truth to help uh, you know people that are down, uh, to not prey on the weak, um, to exercise your power um, with knowledge, and not just uh, not just brooding around. If you you know, so we all have power, and some people have a little more power than others, and uh, some people have the ability to uh, to abuse that power, and um, there are people that are abusing that power. But what I'm saying is, uh, like the path of honesty, it's like, it doesn't matter if you do bad things, but if you're honest in the bad things you do, there's, uh, there's credibility that, that is gained. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's like if, uh, I'm not even going to get into it. This is something that um, you're going to have to look into, and if it's something that interests you, look into it further, and if it's something that's not put it aside and uh, move on to the next thing that interests you. All right, so uh, let's play some music. Let's go with um, 
since we're on the esoteric thing, let's go with some Devil Driver. Um, good, good friends of mine. They were just in town. Um, and holy fuck, they're ripping. This new, uh, this new album is serious, man. It's very technical, but still has a lot of rip, a lot of groove. And they pull out a very weird cover. Something out of, uh, well, let's, I'll just say it. It's, uh, it's Sale from AWOL Nation. And AWOL, um, you might know them from uh, the Cali uh, hip-hop crew, the Shapeshifters. Um, he's got this new thing. It's an uh, alternative pop kind of deal going on. Um, but Devil Driver uh, really takes this song and runs with it. And here it is. It's Sale.
Bender. What a great fucking cover. No. Hey, we're not frozen. No. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, we're not frozen at all. That's wicked. So, uh, how are you doing today? Yeah? Really, eh? <laughs> what a character. What a, you're such a kid, are you? What a crazy little fucker. These torch kicking videos of Vivo are like, get us banned. Oh, really? Yeah. Just really? See, just see. That's Vivo the videos may get us banned. Those are the problems. Yeah, those are the ones that are like, oh, uh, no, we're going to not gonna let you play our videos. Some of the people go, yeah, no, you can play our videos. Just acknowledge us. Some hmm. people say, no, we're not going to let you play in, the, in certain countries. Usually the Vivo ones. Really? Yeah, those are the ones that fuck us up. <clears throat> Now, in all cases, or just some cases? <laughs> well, you know, I wasn't keeping notes. It's a devolution so, out so there. So we're relying on my memory, and uh, I think it's all cases. It's all we cases. could give it a try, and then uh, I'd have to edit it out afterwards, or whatever. Hmm. See, I got an email at the class in session thing from YouTube. Okay. Oh, yeah. What did which they is say? weird. Well, I don't know how they, you, like, sure, I say it on every episode, hey, class in session, 666, all right, email. Right. But there's nothing that links me, that email account, to any YouTube account. Well, what did YouTube say to you? They were just like, hey, here's a bunch of videos. Uh, and there's, like, Miley Cyrus and, like, a bunch of weird shit, which, which I thought was odd. And they sent it to? To, to the class in session. Email? Really? Yeah. Yeah, we can go. We can go right on it and read it. There's a there's a bunch of links to different videos. I also got a an email from uh, somebody, uh, something. It brown. might just be a, a standard Gmail video. Mm, no, I think it's yeah. I don't know. Because of how I don't know. They wouldn't send you stuff if you weren't. Signed that's up that's what it. I thought. <laughs> but well, I'll check my other yeah. Gmail account. Yeah, Did see, you get one in your Gmail account? Um, I'm always getting like YouTube alerts. Really? But, not, but 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 I opted out of the Gmail part of it. So okay, I'll I'll, I'll check it, I'll check my. It might, uh, it, it might just be that the standard settings are yeah I receive these alerts. I'll okay, check my yeah. my my your settings my personal Gmail yeah. thing, which I don't I didn't put any alert settings on. Oh, okay. Like no, no limitations. That's pretty weird though. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll check that and see Track if I go. Because yeah. that's weird. Yeah. I have to say. So, so uh, maybe, maybe we can play Vivo videos now. Maybe there's been a Vivolution and we're like, we, we've been accepted into the club. No, I just think that if anybody plays some videos that are like Vivo that they will all just say no. We're See, not I thought play. Vivo was I just a monetary, so. uh, a monetizing thing that mm -hmm. if your video does get played even third party that they can just attach monetizing to it and there's advertising that goes up and they make money off it anyways. I have absolutely no idea actually. I just know yeah, I, 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 I always thought it was trying. kind of like on air FM kind of, kind of deal. Well, but but anyways, uh, uh, nonetheless, we're gonna play uh, we're gonna play some of those camera vids. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I gotta do that. So uh, this is my my visit to uh, the Manitoba Parliament grounds. Um, it's not as uh, slick as uh, Mr. Albo's uh, uh, documentary. Um, I cut off a lot of the things at the end, um, but there's something that he doesn't really show. When he talks about the Ark of Covenant and how he thinks he, may, you know, he found this depiction of it and blah blah blah, um, what he doesn't describe is who's surrounding the Ark of Covenant, and it's on two sides. It's on both sides, different depiction. Uh, so we're gonna cover all that. We're gonna hopefully we can uh, we can get this to play all the videos in a row. Um, yeah. So here goes. This is video number one. What the fuck's going on, people? This is Al the Alchemist, and I'm here at the uh, Manitoba Legislative Grounds. And I'm about to do some rolling up a weed. There's nobody around. But I, what I did want to show you guys is this thing. Now this is a depiction of an orgy of the gods. 
You can't really see from here. I'm going to have to get closer. But there is, in this corner here, what appears to be Neptune uh, with a mermaid. Somebody with a horse. I don't know what the fuck king that is. Look at that, eh? And look, look at that. Hmm. Interesting. We know about bull worship. We're going to talk a little bit about that on the show. But look at how amazing this is. Very nautical. I don't understand it. Clearly these are the gods and there is some sort of uh, some sort of orgy on the uh, on the right and the left going on. Now we have a sphinx and then another sphinx. We have the Look at the look at the gods looking down on us from the from the dome. And then look at that. Hermes. It's crazy. So we've been talking a lot about secret societies and stuff, and this building was built by secret societies. Now this is a message, it continues as you walk around the building. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you the Hey, what's going on? I'm just here at the Manitoba Legislature. And um, I was showing you a little bit about the, uh, the orgy of the gods that, uh, that sit up above here. Now, I'm not sure if it's just free to go in or, or not, but I'm gonna walk in and show you what's going on here. They have, uh, there's like a uh, Medusa, all kinds of stuff. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks, how are you? Awesome. Hey, over here, please. What's it? Oh, you gotta look through. Yeah, I was just gonna come in and, can I just check this here? Um, I just wanna walk in and, and just quickly film okay. what's in there. Yeah, just leave it over there. Okay, thank you very much, sir. They're very accommodating here, I have to say. No. Okay, one more. Yeah. Okay, so we're surrounded here in lion's heads. Yeah, check it out. Thank you. Check it out. It means, uh, We've got lion's heads everywhere. There's the bison. That's good. Now, here's another orgy going on. This is a very, very pagan establishment. I'm just gonna go take a quick look in here and then go back and get the bag. Here we go. We're in the belly of the dome. Here's the soldiers. Now, when we look down here, this is your classic. Look at this. This is where, look at, it's a marble circle. <laughs> and it looks straight down to this chamber where people would most likely get initiated into one sort of rite or another. Look at that head. Pretty interesting. So each of these chambers pay homage to a different, uh, a different god, I believe. They're not going to tell us exactly what this place is about. But, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to go outside and we're going to uh, show you guys a couple other things. As we come down the stairs here, who is this? Who is this head? Interesting. Now, when you get further into here, there is a, a chamber where there's Medusa. Um, Medusa's head is present. There's another. 
All right, I'm back. I just had to clear a little space on my memory card. I should just go buy some more memory cards. I'm just being a cheap fucker. Okay, so above here, This is seriously pagan shit going on. It's crazy. Now, I don't know if you heard what I was saying earlier, but there is a, uh, hang on. Let me get this back to where I need to get it. All right. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a serious um, hermetic vibe going on to this building. Um, definitely uh, occult oriented. Um, and I don't know if you caught it before my thing, but after you, sir. Um, there's a, when you go through the tours in here, there's uh, Medusa's head on one of the walls, all kinds of stuff. It's, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty, unique, uh, pretty unique building. And um, one of the designers, um, one, of the, one of the main architects of this, uh, this facility, um, teaches at the Hume, uh, Hermetic University of Design. I think it's in the Czech Republic. So that's pretty, uh, pretty fucking amazing stuff. We're going to walk around the other side so you can see. All right, we're on the other side. This is the left-hand side. There he is, standing tall, pointing in the opposite direction. Direction it used to. They rebuilt. Uh, they re they took this thing down and recoded it. But he used to point the other way. But look what this is. Where am I here? There we go. That is a depiction of the Ark of Covenant. Hang on. There we go. A Native American chief, First Nations chief right here. That's yeah, fucking blurry, eh? So First Nations chief with that very distinct winged head we've seen on the wall inside, surrounding the Ark of the Covenant. All right, this thing's getting me confused. And again, we see the pyramid scheme there. More stuff. <coughs> All right, we're gonna walk around. All right, here we are on the other side. Well, just on the other side of the dome here, but you can see, there we have it. They're pointing at something. These guys are looking. They're on guard. These guys are on guard. They're on guard on the front. But at the very back, they point. What are they pointing at? And remember, this guy used to point in that same direction that he's pointing at. Right from this side, we're at the very back. Cleverly hidden. You can see, you can't really tell what, even if it is pointing. Now we have the back foot of Hermes that's pointing in the... Sorry, I'm puffing a joint here. But we have the back foot of Hermes, who's pointing in the... Or which is pointing in the opposite direction, but pointing in the direction it used... Or the torch used to point. So I don't know. There's some, some things going on here. Now we're going to go to the far left side so you can see the depiction of the Queen with the Ark of the Covenant. Alright, so here we are on the uh, far right hand side and you get a better look of uh, what's going on here. It's not pointing. Well, I mean, hermetically hidden it is pointing but it is holding some sort of object, some sort of lamp or something. Now we have faces peeking out, bowing heads, staring down in a subservient fashion to Hermes. Now down here we have what appears to be a royal depiction of the Ark of Covenant. Like, look what we got. A very smug, smug look on this uh, this woman's face, and 
Same with this woman's face. It's like, yeah, yeah, look what we got. Look at that. Look at that symbol. Hidden in the M is a big V. Again, sitting above a pyramid. Here we go. Okay, so that's, um, that's a little bit of um, Manitoba legislative. Now, this, the statues of Hermes, like I said, it's called the Golden Boy here. But the torch used to point the opposite direction, the same the direction that the heel is pointed. Now, far, not too far, but over this, these trees, there's a river. On the other side of that river, there's a road called Rosalind. Now, the guy that built, or that designed this, also designed this apartment on Rosalind. And it's, uh, I have to say, there's some speculation on my behalf. What's happening, people? Uh, just getting ready to rock a 420 in one of my favorite spots in Canada. Uh, this is the uh, one of the gardens, the many gardens that are attached to this place. This crazy Masonic grounds. All right, so here we are. It's 420. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was really stoned. I, to the best of my knowledge, or my memory, uh, and that's like, it's, my head's been through so many poundings, it's, it's a little cloudy, but to the best of my memory, that statue pointed the other way. They took it down and regilded the whole thing. Um, had it on display at the forks for a while, and blah, blah, blah. Um, also, um, a, little, uh, a little grammar slip up. Um, not teaches, taught at uh, the um, Hermetic School of Design or whatever it was called in Prague. Um, that man has been deceased for uh, many a decade. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that, look into it. Um, I really don't, uh, don't do the, uh, the information justice, there's, uh, there's a lot of a lot of info out there. There's a book called The Hermetic Code. Um, it's pretty uh, pretty interesting. So yeah, uh, Marius is gonna rock a rip off the sublimator. I'm gonna roll a joint of some kish. Uh oh, somehow we got Doctor Green come on. Absolutely. Hmm. Where? I guess on the on the wheel. Oh, weird. Maybe after we froze. Maybe after we froze us a little yeah. more. Yeah. Oh, that long. That was long enough. Interesting. Well, we're going to keep going. There's 15 minutes left for recording it anyway, so uh, there we go. <laughs> a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Today's all about problems and rolling with the punches. Yeah. Got 15 minutes left. Um, this is uh, this is a band called Torch. Fucking dig these guys. Let's play. Uh, let's play Letting Go. All right. They're very anthemic. Very anthemic. Soaring vocals.
shoot. Ha ha ha. so fast. All right, we're back. I'm just rolling a giant kish. So, I know we haven't talked a whole lot about weed uh, today or in the uh, past few shows. So we'll show you what's going on here. We've got some swerve. Is that in focus? I can't talk. It's not the right. A little bit farther back. A little bit farther back. I think you need your hand there. Uh, I'm just focusing your face. <laughs> All right. Now do we got it? Can you just tilt that towards me a bit? Yeah, sure. sure. There it is. Perfect. All right. There we go. So this is Swerve. I think I showed you guys some of that uh, last week. I've really been enjoying it. We have a little bit of Congo. The beautiful, illustrious Congolese. There, it is. there we go. Love this weed. Some Seedman's Haze. This stuff looks a little bit brown and beat up, but it stinks like, like pheromones and uh, citrus. A little farther back. Oh, there it is, finally. All right. Um, hmm. This Kish, that's what we're smoking right now. Now, Kish is like a cash crop Ken's shishkaberry knock. I've been uh, been enjoying it lately. Here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Draw. Hang on. Whoop. I guess we need them close together. There. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, work as well. Nope. And then some of this OG I've been enjoying. This stuff's actually really. I'm not, you know, I'm not a huge, huge fish guy, but. When I do find good cushions, I really like to smoke the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. right, let's do this again. There. All right. Yeah, like I'm saying, I, when, when I uh, when I do get um, get good OGs uh, or any good Kushes, I like to smoke the shit out of them, and uh, that's a good one. Also, some candy Kush from DNA. Um, I've been seeing this cut a lot around uh, around Vancouver lately, and um, it's a, it's a step up above the the normal the normal Kushes that we see. That's for sure. All right, here's some of that. Um, all right, let's play. Let's play some more music. This is another Devil Driver tune. This is uh, called the Appetite, and uh, it's a ripper. These guys, I think, have earned the title um, the California Groove Machine. I do believe. Yeah. <laughs> We're good? All right, let's rock the shit out of this.
So we're gonna wrap uh, we're gonna wrap things up here. So across the shields is not a good video to play then, eh? No, it's kick kicking. Kicking is not a good video to play. Across really? Shields is fine. It's oh. Kicking is the one that's on Devo. Fucking kicking is such a wicked tune too. Give it a try, but uh, well, you know what? Back. Maybe maybe we'll play it. Um, it's got like this big copyright notice on the thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at that. Yep, so it's like, and this one is like, yeah, it's no copyright. This, this is what happened. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, let's uh, let's play across the shields. This video is fucking crazy, and maybe we'll play the album version of Kicking, and just put a link to the video. Can we post a link to the video? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to. I don't know how we would write do myself this. a note. On the, yeah, we're gonna post the show page. Because it's such a good video. Um, but okay, so uh, here's uh, here's across the shields. This is the torch. Uh, we're gonna come back and say a quick goodbye, and um, here we go.
see if you improve them. No, you're not. There's the torch. Now, I saw these guys open up for corrosion of conformity um, quite a while ago, and I am now a fan. I fucking dig them. They're, uh, they're super, I don't know, they're just super anthemic. That's all I can say. It's like a, it makes me feel like I'm standing a, on, on a cliff, like, like this. It's awesome. Gonna rip some Seedman's Haze. Uh, what do we got there? Hey, that doesn't have a Vivo thing. All right, let's do this. Let's rock this one. All right. This is a different video than the Vivo video. They've got two videos for this tune. So uh, this one actually is is a little bit. It's it a little like bit a, more appropriate it's because like the Spanish video in Chile. Right. Interesting. See, I uh, I kicked on the back of a greyhound, mm -hmm. and uh, this video is kicking, and it's a, it's on a bus. So so pretty cool. If um, if you are haunted by uh, by the uh, the demons of addiction, man the fuck up. That's all I can say. Just man the fuck up. All right. Now um, we're gonna sign out. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. It's been a shaky day. Uh, we had a little bit of live stream problems. Um, uh, so apparently when we froze, we're, uh, we should have logged back into Be Real TV. Hey, how's it going, John? Good. What's shaking, brother? Hey. We got Medtainer John in the house. We were logged back in. I never had logged. No, but when, when, we, when we crashed, um, I think it just defaults back to Green Thumb. Oh, so we got to we got to physically go back into the the whole the whole thing. Oh, they do. No, I think we do. We're yeah. just we're just wrapping oh, really? up, brother. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. Um. But but anyways, thanks to everybody. Thanks to uh. Thanks to be real. Thanks to Pot TV. Um. Thanks to Devil Driver. Fucking see you guys. Uh. See you guys on Thursday. It's uh. It's gonna be epic. I'm going to I'm going to see them in in Winnipeg at the Garrick Theater. Nice. Yeah. Gonna do uh, maybe rock an interview. Uh, also, um, Charlie Tuna on the Saturday night. So hopefully, rock an interview there. So tune in next week. We're filming the first uh, the first segment of the Animal Shelter this week with Big Bear and Brahms. Check out Brahms's new video. Holy fuck, man! Oh, that's what we should be doing. Uh, we're gonna have to get to it next week, Brahms. My bro filmed this wicked new uh, his new video in Sturgis, and it's like. It's high end. It's well done. Well done. So thanks for tuning into class and session. Hope you guys learned a little bit about hermeticism. And um, it's okay to be esoteric in every day's mundane life. You know, don't uh, don't let the whole the whole straight um, straight approach uh, get you get you down. If you uh, if you have an alternative deity that you you want to pray to and it gets you closer to what you think is God, do it. That's all I can say. There's a quote from the Dalai Lama. Um, he was asked, what, what religion is the best religion? And the Dalai Lama apparently laughed and said, the one that gets you closest to God. So it doesn't matter what you, what you believe in, if your cross is upside down, if your cross is sideways, if... Uh, if you don't have a cross, if you, if you worship a triangle or whatever, it doesn't matter. If it gets you closer to that, um, that state of mind, uh, that's all it really is. So whatever you got to do to get, uh, get you there, call Buddha, call Rama, call Shiva. Fuck, they'll help you out. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to class and session. 307 West Hastings, come buy a bong, come upstairs and smoke it, and uh, enjoy the Vapor Lounge. Um, Tuesday nights, there's uh, the open mic night. It's uh, more of a hell jam. Uh, it's called the Jams in the Key of Green. Also, Sensible BC is happening right now. So um, get your ass out there and uh, do something. Um, check out who's, uh, who's taking care of um, soliciting in your neighborhood and uh, hunt them down so they don't have to hunt you down. Contact them. Say, hey, I want to sign this thing, man. Where do I go? Um, also, you can come here. There's uh, there's uh, sign-ups upstairs uh, in the Vapor Lounge. So uh, let's get this shit done. Take care. Class is out of session.